and uh, welcome everyone to our service of worship today. Um, I just want to make one or two intimations before we uh, begin the service. Um, a, a big thank you to Mr. Gordon Bay who is with us today, who is accompanying us in our uh, service of worship. Our regular organist, Jamie Campbell, is uh, going to be less and less with us uh, as he is now um, having the experience of being awoken um, and leading worship at uh, Fulton Palace Church. And Jamie's last Sunday with us will actually be on the 24th of April. Um, the other thing I want to mention is uh, Ukraine. Um, a letter went out uh, just on Friday with uh, different options or ways in which we can uh, support people in Ukraine. This is still in the process of being worked out, but there's a list of donations and I'm going to try and arrange for a receptacle uh, here um, again in the vestibule for the particular uh, donations being requested. Uh, so the details of that should be in the letter either posted out to you or in the communication made by email. The rest of the intonations I think are clear in the uh, auto service. I would encourage folks to come to some of the uh, joint uh, shared services marking Holy Week, uh, which will be in different churches uh, each evening of the week. And then on Good Friday, there's 12 till 3, the seven words for the cross, and that will be a Queen's Cross uh, church. And then there's a, an Easter breakfast next Easter Sunday uh, in Queen's Cross Gardens, and then a breakfast uh, in Rubislaw Church Centre, and that's before our regular uh, Easter Sunday worship um, here at Holborn West Church. But the details uh, are all there for you. And uh, also, um, Isabel is uh, inviting us on an <coughs> introductory course on ways of praying, uh, led by the Epiphany Group, and I think you have details there in your order of service. Let's um, gather our thoughts, our minds, as we gather to worship God and uh, celebrate this Palm Sunday the arrival of Jesus into Jerusalem. The story of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem tells us that after his celebrated arrival, he went into the temple and looked around at everything. As we gather here for worship today, may it be with a sense that Jesus has walked in too and is looking around. May our eyes be open to see him. May our hearts be ready to be seen by him. May our worship be worthy of his presence. And may we be transformed so that we see the world through his eyes. Let us sing to God's praise our opening hymn, 365, Ride On, Ride On.
Almighty God, whose love endures forever, who meets us where we are, who meets us as we are, our true selves, flawed and broken, sick and well, sad and joyous, doubtful and sure, and yet forever held in your steadfast love. As we begin this week of contemplation and reflection, guide our thoughts towards the life and teachings of our Saviour Jesus. Show us the way forward and through the difficulties of this life and these troubling times. Lead us towards the gates of your kingdom. Forgive us for all the times we have failed to follow you and embolden us to do better in your steadfast love. Like those before us, we come together today in our buildings, in our homes, perhaps separated in space, but bound always in dedication to your Son, Jesus, strengthened in your Holy Spirit and united always. May we have that sense that as we gather here in your house of being present in your steadfast love. And may our hearts be moved to sing, exclaim, proclaim Hosanna to the King. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. So our service today is, is really going to be in two parts. The first part is, a, um, I suppose, the traditional sort of Palm Sunday a celebration when people gathered and they praised uh, Jesus uh, as he entered into Jerusalem on the donkey. The second part of the service is going to be more to focus on the passion, uh, the passion really meaning the suffering of Jesus on that journey to the cross. And much of our service today is going to be uh, listening to, to readings, to scriptures, because even if we make the journey through the services um, of Holy Week, we quite often maybe don't reflect on the great detail uh, that there is regarding the passion of uh, Jesus making his way to the cross. But uh, we're going to have our first reading uh, from the Old Testament, and it's uh, Psalm 118. I will be reading this psalm, and then we have different readers for each of the other readings in the course of the service. Psalm 118 from verse uh, 19. And it's no doubt that for many of the folks who were gathered in Jerusalem, these words from the psalm would have come to mind. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. The Lord has done it in this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light to shine upon us. With woes in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Our second reading this morning is from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, 
going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Thanks be to God. In the course of this service, we're going to look at Thomas two different feelings of a, a journey. One is Jesus making his way into Jerusalem, being hailed and um, greeted with welcome, with praise. And of course, there's some caution there because some of the teachers of the law, some of the ruling um, folks um, tell Jesus to get his supporters to be more quiet, to hug their leashed. Um, but Jesus says, if they are silenced, this, even the stones uh, will cry out. And uh, I was looking at two paintings. One was a Romanian Orthodox painting, and it had Jesus on his way in, into Jerusalem and the crowds there, the children there, and so on. Um, and a strange expression on Jesus' face, one of, of benign uh, love and care, but one that also seemed to express um, concern because he knew what he was going into. And then the other painting I was looking at, and you'll just need to imagine these, I don't have them uh, here for you to, to see on the screen, but the other painting is later when Jesus is carrying the cross out of the city of Jerusalem, beyond the city walls, eh, to the Golgotha, or, 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 to, or to Calvary, eh, to the um, cross. These different experiences that Jesus underwent in that one week. But let's think for a moment about the stones crying out. Um, imagining these stones almost being like people, if, if you been brought up in Stonehaven, I used to know, you know, going down to the beach and seeing the many different types of stones, the kinds of stones, representing in many ways the different kinds of people and characters that we are. The whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. It must have been so wonderful to be part of that crowd. You can just imagine the atmosphere that day, charged with excitement, love and anticipation. Praising God to the full, acknowledging Jesus. And then the Pharisees step in and ask Jesus to rebuke his supporters, to make them be quiet. This Jesus refuses to do. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. But the question I have for you today is, how many of us today do keep our love for Jesus quiet? Sometimes people even struggle to say that they are Christians. Sometimes people are embarrassed almost to say that they attend church. They will say that they go to church, but they won't say that they are Christians. They don't want to 
feel awkward amongst others. Surely, though, keeping quiet means that love is diminished and goes unnoticed. The love of Jesus and the love for our neighbour. The world is full of people who need to experience the transforming love of Jesus. And the only way they will find out is if we share our love, to share how the love of Jesus has transformed our lives. We can't keep quiet and we shouldn't allow the world to make us feel that we should. Let me just follow this reflection with this short prayer. Lord Jesus, forgive us, Lord, when our hosannas lack love, when we desire to fit into the world. Strengthen our voices today, help us to joyfully praise your name and to share your transforming love with everyone we encounter. Amen. Let's continue with uh, another hymn reflecting on Palm Sunday, Hosanna, Mount Hosanna, hymn 3, 6, 7. scripture readings. It's not that we disregard them, but uh, the reason we're doing this is it's probably something we should do more often because um, if you were to pick up a gospel and any of the gospels, uh, certainly Matthew, Mark and Luke, the second half is all to do with the journey to the cross. Uh, uh, there's almost that breaking yet, and yet we tend to squeeze it all into the sort of one week, the, the Holy Week. And yet, for the Gospel writers, it was such a central theme. And of course, for St. Paul himself, it was a central theme. Jesus crucified and risen. And so, there is a great danger in our observance uh, within the Church, and maybe more so in the Church of Scotland, that we skip 
literally skip from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday, Palm Sunday, where we tend to focus on the happy bit, the cheery bit, the um, bringing uh, Jesus in with, with acclaim and, and celebration. And then the next Sunday, we're on to Easter Sunday, the joy of Jesus risen from the dead. But we know in life, we know in reality, there's a lot of painful stuff that goes on in our lives, in the lives of others, and of course, in the life and death and resurrection of the Son of God, Jesus. And we know how crowds can turn from being people of praise and um, celebration to people the opposite. I'm, I'm, I'm smiling, I'm smirking here because I, I didn't have anyone to go to Pretoria with yesterday. I know it's very sad. Um, so I didn't manage to make it to the match. But I did listen to it on the radio. And apparently the team played so terribly that a lot of the supporters were booing. And even Willie Miller, the great legend of Aberdeen football team, said he was very tempted to join them <laughs> because the team had played so bad. And yet, of course, we know if they'd been winning, if it had been the other way round, they would all, and the supporters would have been cheering them. Now, that's maybe a relatively trivial example, but it certainly shows how um, human nature and how expressions uh, can change um, from happiness, uh, from gladness, uh, to sadness, to sorrow, to anger, to hatred. And um, what we are going to hear in these passion narratives is something of that part of Jesus going on that journey as he gets off from the donkey and the different events take place during that week, the Passover, the Last Supper that he uh, participates in, the washing of the disciples' feet that we have marked here in our uh, sanctuary, these, the arrests, uh, the trial, the mockery, and so on, that we capture something of that journey that must have been so um, awful, basically, for Jesus who had come to bring salvation uh, to the world. So, we are going to have a first reading from uh, Louise, followed by Norman, eh, followed by Yvonne. So we'll just, I'll just ask each reader just to follow on from the, the other, and I'll sit quietly in the corner. And so, it, the, the, the last thing I'm going to say is that this is an, an exercise and challenge for you and me, that we concentrate on listening eh, eh, reflectively to these readings and, and let them speak to us for themselves. This reading is from Luke 23, reading from verse 1 to 25. Then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate, and they began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man, but they insisted. He stirs up the people all over Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased, because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there, vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. Dressing him in an elegant robe, they sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, 
You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us, as you can see. He has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. But the whole crowd shouted, Away with this man and release Barabbas to us. Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time he spoke to them, Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts they insisted they demanded that he be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. The Crucifixion of Jesus As the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon, Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. <coughs> A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the childless women, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, that will happen. Is dry. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine and vinegar, and said, If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly. But we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered, Truly I tell you, today you will be, will, you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness the sight saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. 
but all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Amen. Thanks be to God for reading of his word. We sing now this beautifully reflective hymn, O Sacred Head, Sword Wounded Three. God and dedication, we lay down what we have, and we lay down what we are before you, in the hope that you will take it and use it for the life and ministry of your church, the furthering of your mission, and the glory of your kingdom, this day and every day. Amen.
the choir are now going to uh, sing the anthem. I think it's more related to the first part of the service. <laughs> yes. riding, or rather being carried, to what he knows is his death. He accepts what is to come as the inevitable result of who he is. There is grace in abundance for all who will accept it, but he is sadly aware that there will be few. Even the donkey droops his head compassionately. Let us come to God with our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Loving God, you search us and you know us. You speak to us and you listen. Your love brought us into being and your love wraps us in care forever. We thank you this morning for the gifts given to each of us, our world, our friends, our families, our homes. We rejoice in your presence in our lives. Help us to be keen, to be willing, to share the joy that we have in you, the love we have for you, and to enthuse others to experience your love firsthand. We bring our words of prayer for ourselves and for our world, near and far. We thank you for your eternal love and for, for all who try to spread it throughout your church, through your communities, through your nations, and through your world. We pray for the different churches in many different situations and cultures, seeking to communicate, engage with people about the good news of Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord. We especially remember the people of Christian faith in the land of Ukraine and those who have had to leave the land. And we give thanks for those who have shown faith and trust in you in the most awful and testing and trying of circumstances. Help us to be encouraged and strengthened and inspired by people's strength and resilience in the face of so much conflict and animosity. Help us, Lord, to bring people to you in our prayers to the shadow of the cross, that they may also know, know the joy of the resurrection. We pray for the people who try to live daily by your love, for all who live out its life-giving call to serve, caring for self and neighbour. 
Help us to know what your love is calling us to do and to change the world for the better. We pray for the people who seek your love in scripture, experience, religion, the arts, nature. May their search be fruitful. May they find help along the way. And we may we be a support to all who seek you. We pray for people all over the world who find that words, not love, are used like weapons against them, who are ostracized because of their wealth or background, or their race, or their gender, their sexuality, or their ability. Help us, Lord, to show your love to them, and to bring peace and justice in your name, and be brothers and sisters in love to all in need. These prayers we offer and make through the one who made that lonely journey to the cross. And through that death, brought life and hope and healing to the world. In Jesus' name, inspired by his love, we pray. Amen. Well, we come to our closing hymn, and I think I forgot to say, folks, of course, are very welcome to come through uh, to the hall for uh, tea and coffee after the service. Again, a reflective hymn as we look ahead to uh, Holy Week and particularly Good Friday. Praise to the holiest in the height. And, or I should say, on Monday, Thursday, the different churches that are taking place in the Holy Week services are doing their own Monday Thursday service, so I hope a number of us will come to share in communion uh, this Thursday evening at 7 o'clock here at Holbert West. And then on Good Friday we have a joint service, a united service here at Holbert West also. Praise to the holiest in the height, 378. <laughs>
we join in the words in the old print. Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem. Jesus invites us to follow him. This journey leads through the shadows of the tree of the tree, the night of Gethsemane, the afternoon darkness of the water. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. Those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Our Lord is on a journey. May we have the grace to follow this Christ and to give to him our very lives. For in giving away our lives we find them, and in dying we live. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and evermore. Amen.